calls out to you. You'd heard of Mermaid's legendary curiosity. What do you need? Welcome to Classic Game Room, where I've got two great things that go well together, dragons and disco. This is the review of Dragon's Crown, coming to you from the intergalactic space arcade. This is Dragon's Crown from Atlas, a downloadable game replete with magic and heaving bosoms. How does, how does she even walk around with those things? That's gotta be top heavy. This is a stylish, fun yet predictable action adventure RPG style side scrolling beat em up game. Released exclusively as of this review for the PlayStation 3 and Vita. You choose one of the many character classes, name them, and off you go on your adventure, slaughtering creatures, grinding, and leveling up. You can play with up to three of your friends for a four-player game, and you'll be mashing buttons a lot. What you see on screen is pretty much what you get with Dragon's Crown. The game's visuals and quirky sense of humor remind me of Monty Python and Terry Gilliam's animations in particular. While I've played a lot of games like this, the visual style, which is like a live-action painting, makes Dragon's Crown stand out from the crowd. Are occupied with the dragons there's the plot, something about a dragon's crown. Okay, good for it. More importantly, there's an absinthe fairy named Tiki who's passed out in a stein of mead. Now, aspiring game developers and programmers, pay attention to this. If your video game can't have flamethrowers and El Camino or burning people with monsters and cutting them in half a tude, it should at least have an absinthe fairy passed out in a stein of mead while holding a cherry. A half-naked woman is lying in a dark corner, bound by a chain. Right, okay, so we've got all this and lizard people with spears. As you can see, Dragon's Crown has a lot going for it, and if you enjoy good old button-mashing RPG adventures, you should check this one out. It's not terribly expensive. And the music and art is quite good also. It's hard to play this game without giggling, at least a little bit. You meet a female I mean, come on, really? I think that was a missed opportunity to have the narrator record some kind of line about inserting a key. How did he do any of this without laughing? I'd love to hear the outtakes. Now, for most of this review, I'm playing as the sorceress named Qbert with a three because I'm clever. Or, well, not really, but it's still a funny name for a top-heavy sorceress who can barely walk. Fortunately, she's much better at floating and teleporting. Now that's a good character choice, I think. Even though you have to spend time regenerating your magic, you can summon up walls of fire and tornadoes. If that's not your thing, you can play as an Amazon who always gets great deals on books and movies online. A knight, an elf, a dwarf, what is this, gauntlet? You collect treasure and weapons and things that'll make you stronger after each of your adventures. When you level up, you can increase your skills and health and magic power. You're even scored points while adventuring, and you choose your teammates if you're just playing a single-player game. Oh no! Everyone's... Dead. Well, that's okay. You can pretty much continue forever by reanimating your dead friends who are already reanimated to begin with because you first reanimate them by collecting their bones, but then you can spend coins to reanimate the already reanimated people. Right? Wow. it's a lot of animation. In addition to the main adventure, there's numerous side quests and loads of treasure and things lurking in the environments. And in conclusion, if you like these kinds of games, you can have a good time in the cheeky and quirky Dragon's Crown. And let's not forget, passed out absent fairy in a stein of mead holding a cherry. <laughs> 